our world is dominated by polymers. Plastics are perhaps what people think of most often when the word polymer comes up, but paper, wood, flesh, shells, uh, soccer balls, glass, gels, tyres, hair, among a thousand other things, are made of or contain polymers. Our reliance on polymers and our willingness to treat them as disposable, plastics in particular, is causing us some environmental problems. But let's have a look at what a polymer actually is. A polymer is a chain-like molecule that's made when smaller molecules undergo a chemical reaction that links them together like beads on a string. The individual starting molecules are called monomers. Mono means one and mer means part, so the monomer is a single part. When monomers start to join together they form short chains called oligomers and if there are enough monomers and the reaction continues the chains get longer and longer and can eventually be called polymers which means many parts. So the final polymer chain is made up of a lot of repeating units which used to be the monomers. So what of all those polymer types I mentioned at the start? Well, We can classify polymers broadly into synthetic and biological polymers. Synthetic polymers are those that humans have made. Biological polymers are those that are produced by living organisms as part of their growth. But they all have in common the fact that they're long chain-like molecules made up of repeating units. Biological polymers are many and varied. They include substances like sugar polymers or polysaccharides, which are made of smaller sugar molecules joined together in a long chain. Cellulose that makes up wood, cotton and paper is one of these, and this picture shows a short section of a much longer cellulose molecule. You can see the repeating unit, which is glucose, visible in alternating orientations. Proteins make up a significant part of the structure of all living things. This picture shows a space-filling model of a very large protein known as a chaperonin. The individual monomer units aren't visible here. The chain has twisted around itself in a complicated way to form this three-dimensional barrel shape, which is crucial to its function, which is to help other protein chains to fold up in the correct way. DNA is arguably the most important polymer of all, the code that provides the information for every living thing to grow. DNA is built from four different monomers that are assembled in sequences that represent that code and each rung on the section of the DNA ladder that you can see here is formed from a pair of monomers, one in each of the two helical chains, that reach out into the space between the chains and are held together by hydrogen bonding. Synthetic polymers, on the other hand, are those that have been made by humans, developed through chemical research. The first synthetic polymers were rubbers that were created to replace and improve on natural rubber, which is a polymer produced by the rubber tree. Now our chemistry is sophisticated enough that we're able to make a vast array of polymers with different properties. We're even able to create biological polymers by synthetic methods in the laboratory. Most synthetic polymers are organic, carbon-based. Common ones you may have heard of are polyethylene, polypropylene, nylon, polystyrene, polyvinyl alcohol, PET, which is polyethylene terephthalate, and PTFE, polytetrafluoroethylene. We'll look at some of these in more detail later when we talk about the chemical reactions that create polymers from monomers. We can also make inorganic polymers, which are not carbon-based. The most common of these is silicon rubber, which is silicon-based. Note that silicon is the element and silicone is the polymer, which is a compound with oxygen. It's used for glues, waterproof seals and non-stick materials like flexible baking trays. Remember, the thing that all these polymers, biological and synthetic, have in common is the fact that they are made up of smaller individual units that have been joined together to make a chain. The chemical and physical properties of the final substance, its strength, rigidity, its water resistance, stickiness, whether it's biodegradable, depend in part on what the original monomers were. Different polymers are produced in a variety of ways, but if we restrict our view for the moment to organic synthetic polymers, we can broadly class them into two groups based on the kind of chemical reaction that's used to link the monomers together. The first kind is addition polymerization. These kinds of polymers are produced from alkene monomers like ethene and propane. To link the monomers, an addition reaction is used. In other kinds of addition reactions, like hydrogenation and halogenation, the double bond of an alkene is broken open to allow two new atoms to be joined to the molecule. 
addition polymerization uses the same idea, but rather than adding a couple of new atoms, the broken double bond now allows each monomer to join to two other monomers. In the same way that hydrogenation, for example, turns an alkene into an alkane, addition polymerization turns a lot of separate alkene molecules into a long alkane chain. The other kind of polymerization is based on condensation reactions. The two condensation reactions are esterification and amidification. Both involve two functional groups joining to form one. For esters, it's a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. And for amides, it's a carboxylic acid and an amine. In both cases, a water molecule is produced as a byproduct each time a link is made. In order for this to result in a chain, you either need a single monomer that contains both of the functional groups, or you need two different monomers, each with two identical functional groups. We'll look at this in more detail in another video, but for now, notice that you can tell the difference between an addition polymer and a condensation polymer by looking at its backbone, the continuous chain of the polymer. These diagrams show sections of several types of polymer chain. The addition polymers have an alkane backbone. Side groups may hang off this backbone, but the continuous chain is just a plain hydrocarbon. Condensation polymers, however, will have either ester or amide groups in the backbone, since these are the links that joined the originally separate monomer molecules together.